be immortalized now. <coughs> so, last time in problem one, we dealt with things that were flying off tabletops, that were going straight sideways, that were falling out windows, falling off cliffs, doing all that kind of stuff. Because we had to have some height, because we had no initial vertical velocity. But what if there is an angle? So that's what we're going to learn today. What happens if you're going at an angle? Well, of course, if we're going at an angle, really we're going two directions. So if I launch this at some velocity, at some angle, in realism, I'm going two different directions. I'm going this way, which is my vertical. Vertical, but vertical gets changed, so that's really just the initial vertical velocity. And then sideways, I'm going horizontally, and horizontally, of course, is traveling at a constant speed, so that one doesn't need to have an initial or a final because it's just constant. But this one's going to be changing. It's going to get smaller, 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 and then bigger, bigger, bigger as it's falling down. So <clears throat> that's just initial. So if I launch something at this velocity and that angle, I've got it made. Now, of course, when you look at this, you say, hey, the VVI is the which side? Opposite. The opposite side. So I'd want to use sine. 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 And VH is the adjacent. adjacent side. So I want to use cosine. cosine. So to find VH, I'm going to use cosine. To find VVI, I use sine. And this should look really familiar because this is like what we were doing last unit, almost like we were doing last unit so that we can do this unit or something. Okay. I'm the only one that gets excited by that. Um, so we're going to use cosine and sine, and, and we can figure out stuff like that. So if we got this, now before, remember how we said the VVI always crossed off of that other formula? Mm -hmm. Now it won't. So make sure the G is negative in that part, because if you have a positive VVI and you try and put G in as negative, then suddenly it's making you go faster up and everything's weird. If you don't have a VVI, it's not that important, but if you do have, which we will today, it's, it's pretty critical. So if I hit a baseball with a 42.7 meters per second velocity at a 62.5 degree angle, I want to know how high did it go, which is my what? Vertical velocity. Vertical initial velocity. The angle. How high? Oh. Yeah, that's going to be a dv. What was the hang time? That's going to be the T total. And how far did it go? That's going to be the D H. So <coughs> we got it made. Um, what do we know? This says meters per second. Meters per second has to be a velocity, velocity but that's the velocity going ooh, that way. That, that was mean. Your tires hit skin. It doesn't want us to learn. Oh. I hate when that happens. Okay, so. Yay! So we know this is the velocity at that angle. So we know V and we know our angle. But what we want to do is we say, OK, this is 42.7, and this is 62.5. So I can easily break this into VVI and into VH. And what do we say we have to use for VH? Uh, cosine. Cosine. So VH is going to be cosine of 62.5 times the hypotenuse, which is 42.7. And VVI is the opposite, so here we're going to use sine of 62.5 times 42.7. And this is where you make sure your calculator is in degrees. degrees. Get that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so at a 62 degree angle, that's bigger up than it is over. So that makes sense that our number was bigger up than over. Now, how high did it go? Well, it's going to go up until it stops, stops. stops going up. So we know that the VVI is going to be my initial velocity. And we know my final velocity here is going to be zero. And what's going to slow me down? Yeah, my acceleration is going to be gravity, which is going to be negative at 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's gravity's acceleration. And so then we say to myself, hey, I have a V initial that I just figured out right there. If I have a V initial and a V final and an A and I'm looking for duh, do I have a formula that has all four of those? Of course I do. Which one is that? I don't know, but I know we got four. <laughs> wow, it's almost like you can read your notes. <laughs> okay, if we use the D the VF squared equation and we solve it for D, it's gonna look like this, and I'm gonna use up here to remind me that this is going up, and G of course is gonna be my acceleration. And my VF we just said is gonna be so it's gonna go up until its highest point, it's gonna go up until it's zero. So we've got that there. So my VVI here is gonna be the Zero minus 37.9 squared divided by zero. So if you're in fraction mode, it should look like that. Cool. Luckily, we are really strong when we hit our baseballs. And this baseball went 73 meters up. That's a nice high pop fly. Cool. Now, what was the hang time? How much time do we have to position ourselves before it comes down and we catch it? Well, again, I'm looking for T, but what has these three things in it and T? The formula for acceleration. So if we take our acceleration formula, which looked like that, and we're solving it for T, then the T and the A are going to trade places. So T is going to be VF minus VI, but the VI is really the v, VI because I'm only worried about what's going up and down. And my acceleration is going to be, again, gravity. So, again, this VF is still going to be zero when I'm using this if I'm finding out what is the time up to the highest point. So we have a time down formula that says if I'm at my highest point and falling down, how long is it going to take? The time up formula is saying how long is it going to take to go up until it stops. And so if I'm going up till I stop, it's going to be that. So this is going to be an important formula for us, too. So we'd like to write that one down. Something like this came out. No way. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so I got this number, and this number was the time up, but I asked for the hang time, and the hang time is up and down. down. Well, if it took 3.86 seconds to go up, how long is it going to take to come back down? Yeah, so as long as I know it's coming down the same height it went up and all that stuff, then all I have to do is times two it. So that's going to be 7.73 seconds total. So plenty of time for you to go, I got it, I got it, and you get under it and 
That's why the pop flies are so easy to catch because you're in the air for a long time, so it's not, you know. Okay. No. But when it's flying really low and fast, then you don't have that time interval. And it's just harder. Lastly, of course, we want to know how far did it go, and of course, we know that dh is equal to dh times t. Now, if you remember at the very beginning here, we figured out that the dh was 19.7, and just a second ago, we said it's flying through the air at 7.73 seconds. So that's my dh and my t. And we get 152 ohms. So luckily we're on steroids and we can hit like this. <laughs> no. Baseball players never take steroids. That's what they want you to do. So that was easy, right? Yeah. Okay, are any of these formulas new? Uh, we, we've done all of these before. I mean, we add some letters to things, but it's just modifying the formulas we already know and are comfortable with. So how high did it go? We just said, okay, the height, I'm not going to use this angular velocity. I'm going to use only the up and down part. And so I stick that in there. And then, of course, the whole time it was going up and down, it was going sideways. So I find once I find the total time, I plug that into the sideways equation. So vi is the same thing as the vi. The vi, yeah, because here, if I'm going up, I want only the speed that's going straight <laughs> up, and so I don't use this speed. I use the speed that's going straight up. So straight up. If I'm using up and down. Now, when I'm solving for all this stuff, um, what is it that I'm typically looking for? Distance. Most of the time, it's distance. When you see a guy hit a shot that goes really far, most of the time you don't say, how high did it go or how long was it in the air? Really, all we care about is how far it went. That happens a lot of times. So wouldn't it be cool if we could take all those equations that we just had a minute ago and throw them all together? Oh, God, no. Oh, my God. But well, it makes it easier. Yeah, but it creates Frankenstein. So Johnny kicks a soccer ball with a 22-point meters per second velocity <laughs> at a 32-degree angle. How far did it go? Here, we know it's going to go up and down. We know it's going to go sideways. But... We don't really care about why should I have to break up my triangle and then find T and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a new equation here. And it throws together all the equations that we had before. But this one only works if we're landing at the same height we took off from. Because built into what we were just talking about, the time up and the time down were the same. So if I'm kicking a soccer ball, no problem. It's going to land at the same height it took off from the ground. If I'm hitting a baseball and then you catch the baseball, they're about the same height that they take off and hit from. If you're shooting basketball, your hands are about the same height as the net. Assuming you're not really short. short. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you got a little bit of hops and you're jumping, it's right about there. So it works well with all that kind of stuff. What it doesn't work so well is I'm on a cliff. If I throw something here and it comes down here, is the time up and the time down there the same? No. 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 Or if I'm down here and you're up on top of the roof of a building and I'm down here and I'm throwing you, yeah, that's good. I'm throwing stuff up to you, then the time up is much bigger than the, that was an ugly guy. <laughs> the time up is bigger than the time down. So this is only going to work if they're the same because, again, the time up equals the time down is built into the equation. And so if it's not that, then it's going to be something different. So this is our beautiful range equation. Oh, my God. Oh, what is so, positive T? Now, this takes care of, 
I broke it into sine and cosine, and I did my time up times two formula, and I did the VAT equals VHT, and I threw all four of those formulas together, and we end up with this. And the train now, <coughs> yes, it's a positive gravity, because remember in the time up formula, we had zero minus the VVI over the G, and this negative and that negative canceled out to give me positive time, which is a good thing, so that negative took care of that. Cool. Yeah. So that's why it's positive G in this equation. Um, now, this is really important. The biggest thing that people screw up with is I always see somebody having trouble with it, and they're always getting the wrong answer, and they don't know why they're getting the wrong answer. And then I look at what they're doing on their calculator, and every time they're plugging in 20. <laughs> that does not say 20. That says twice the angle. So if we have a 32 degree angle here, we want to have 2 times 32. Which is 64. Which is 64, yeah. You're good at math. It's not 20, it's going to be 64 for this one. Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah. What if the angle doubled is more than 360? Um, I don't know how in the world you can kick something like that. <laughs> Generally speaking, when you're launching something, it's somewhere between 0 and 90. Because otherwise you'd be measuring it this way. Um, so... <laughs> okay, we'll talk about all those weird things next year when we talk about gravitation and stuff. For here, we're just going to say my horizontal displacement or my range is equal to the sine of 2 times 32. Now, this V, I don't have to break it into VH or VBI. I just use that angular V, which is 22.7 22.7, and then we divide by So try it, try it, try it! I have a calculator, I don't see you with a calculator. Ooh, she's not a smash. So much for a key. Sorry, you just straight max. So what do we get? What do we get? What do we get? Numbers. numbers. I already got a number. Yeah, yeah. numbers. Nara, what did you get? Two. Two. Nara. I know. It's too hard to you just got back and already said. Two. Two. You just go plug in. Sorry. Did you get it? You didn't even do it. So what was it? What'd you get? That's what I got. Here, yes. Wow. If you get what I got, you must be a genius like me. Is there going to be one for close Yeah. No? Okay, so that was pretty easy, right? Yeah. Now, that works out great when I'm solving for DH, but could I also rearrange this stuff if I know how far it went and figured out what velocity I need to go at? Yeah. Or what angle I need to shoot at? Yeah, yeah it's just like algebra or something. So, <laughs> I know some of you are terrified at that algebra stuff. Okay. I shoot a basketball from 5.37 meters launching it at a 59 degree angle. How fast did the ball leave my head? We can do the same equation. We can use the same equation. GH equals sine 2 theta times V squared over G. <coughs> and we're looking for this time? Velocity. The velocity. So V is going to stay where it is. G is going to move from the bottom on this side to the top up here. This whole mess is going to move to the bottom down there. And then to get rid of this, we're going to need one of those. So we're going to square root, and g, of course, is going to be 9.81. We're going to times the, what's the, the, the 5.37 e's, and then we're going to divide by 
sky of July. So it would look just like that in your calculator. I got that. Basketball. A B ball. Sir, why did you shoot the ball if you put it in there? What? You let go of the ball if you put it in there. I let go of the ball if you put it in the air. That's how you tell the ball to find you. Yeah. Is that how it is? That's like a three pointer. Oh, I see. I remember that. Yeah, how high I am and how far I went. You can't hit a big piece of it. He's Asian. Can't do it. I was talking about what it is. I wasn't saying anything. Okay, now. How far would the ball have gone if she? I became a she. <laughs> you don't have to hide the face anymore. You, you think you notice and curve or something. <laughs> anyway, so here, if we're looking for how far we're going to go, then we're going to go back to the original form, right? So we're going to go back to... And so now we're going to take the sine of 2 times 31. And I'm going to say, well, what if I, I still shoot it at the exact same speed I shot that other one? How off am I going to be now? Because yes. the rim was 5.37 moves away. Okay, Kara. Oh, 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 if it's off by a centimeter, actually half a centimeter. Right. Is that going to miss? No, is that essentially the same spot? Yeah. Yeah. And you're saying, how, how come it's the same spot? It's because of the basketball room. No, not, not because I've got some wiggle room in the hoop, but how can I shoot it at two radically different angles and end up in the same spot? I don't know. Oh, the last risk. No, this is one of the magic things about projectile motion. It's really kind of cool. Let's pretend we have the ground. If I launch something at a nice low trajectory, what's going to happen is I don't give it very much time in the air because it's not going very high, so it's going straight sideways and it hits the ground pretty quickly. If I put a little bit more air under it, then it's going to be in the air longer and it's going to go farther. And of course, if I do it higher, and if I do it higher, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger up to a point. Then what happens is I start shooting it so high that I'm shooting it more up than I am over. And what happens is I end up going higher and higher 
and higher, but I'm not going as far sideways. And what we find is that there are two different trajectories that will land at the same spot. So like this bottom one might have been 15 if that was 15 degrees, and this high one had to have been? We don't know, man. No, wait. What are the above? 75. Look at the units. You just. No, you just. Guess what's going to happen when I add these up? Equals 90. Hey, these are what kind of angles? Supplementary. Supplementary add up to 180. Complementary angles add up to 90. So what you find in projectile motions is that as long as you're landing at the same height, it doesn't matter if you take the low trajectory or the high trajectory. As long as they add up to 90, as long as they are complementary angles, we're going to end up at the same spot. Now, how do we know which one we want to do? Is there an advantage of one over the other? Yes. That's how you here. When you're playing basketball, actually, there is an advantage to have the higher one. Because when you look at when you look at the hoop from a low angle, the hole looks smaller than if you're coming down from a high angle. You know what I mean? If you're coming down from a high angle, it looks more like a circle. Here, it doesn't look much like a circle. So the higher you are, the more wiggle room you have, basically. And so in here, the 59 degree angle would be easier to hit than the 31 would be if you're off a little bit. And so there is an advantage there. We have somebody in here that plays golf with a ball. How weird. If you play golf with a ball, you have a whole bunch of clubs in your bag. And does anybody know what these clubs are for? Why you carry 14 clubs with you? Different ranges. They're all at a different angle. And if they're all at a different angle, then they impart a different angle to the ball so they have a different trajectory for the ball. And so you have different distances that you can hit them based on the trajectory you have. Some of them go real high, some of them keep it low. Well, if I want, if I have the same shot that I hit, if I can pick the low or the high route and I get to the same spot, is it going to act the same once it hits the ground? No. No, this first one, if I hit this low trajectory, it's going to hit and it's going to roll because it's got mostly sideways velocity. But if I hit the high route, the high route is coming down with mostly down velocity and it's just going to go hop, hop and stop. So you have an advantage of one over the other with what's going to happen after it lands. Do I want to get a lot of roll or do I want it to stop? And so that will depend on... They have in, in ball golf, you have these things called green. Oh, and they're yeah. usually green. And, and the grass is mowed really short. And, and there's a hole in there somewhere. Well, it depends on where you are. Like, they, they also have this stuff that are called sand traps. And so, so you might have a sand trap that's right here, and your ball may have ended up right here. Well, if your ball is right here and you've got like no green to work with, do you want to go the high route or the low route? High. You want to go the high route, so you want to pop this up a little higher so it hits and bounces and stops, hopefully in the hole. But if you hit the low route, then it's going to hit and roll all the way over here. Well, on the other hand, if your hole was over here, then you'd prefer taking the low route. I'm going to pop it over here and then let it roll toward the hole. Yeah. So, so drive. you can't make a hole in the drive. Yeah. The drive is 45 degree. Yeah. That's a very low angle. Roll. Is it illegal? Is it a 45 degree angle? No. What's now, <laughs> when we there there is stuff going on with a golf ball that's not a true projectile. Because you can get a golf ball to do all sorts of weird things spinning. Now, if you hit a golf ball softly. It becomes a true projectile, but when you're hitting it full force, you you impart a spin on the ball, and you're doing all sorts of other things to it. So it doesn't it becomes it doesn't follow this nice rock. Typically, if you hit like a driver, your trajectory is going to look like that. 
spin. Because of the spin on the block. So that's obviously got something else going on with it because rocks don't do that. So, but if you're hitting it softly, yes, it does behave a lot like. So if you're on the green and short shots, stuff like that, it behaves much more like a normal projectile. But when we look at this, um, which angle tends to give us the best distance? 45. Yeah, 45 is its own complementary angle. Because 45 and 45 add up to 90. So yes, yeah, some of you are like, yes, I guessed right on the CBA. But how many of you have had experience throwing things before? Have you ever noticed that? But, you know, you kind of launch it at that 45 and it goes better? Yeah. If you're, if you're launching it at 60 degrees, that's going mostly up. And so we're not going that much that way. We're just spending all of our energy going up and down. So, 45 is that nice compromise between how much am I going sideways and how much am I going up. Here. So, yeah, see if we would have had this lesson before the CBA, you all would have gotten that one right. For homework, of course, you want to do nothing. What? <laughs> You want to do problems too, but first we're going to go on a field trip. Yay. Yes. We're going to go to South America to hunt the dreaded killer monkey of Brazil. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's do this. Why would we kill it? Now, I... Yes. Is it someone who kills monkeys, or is it a monkey that kills what if It's a killer monkey. Killer monkey. Killer monkey. Killer monkey. Killer monkey. Killer monkey. So, we're going to go to South America, and... No. We <laughs> we're not going to kill the dog. <laughs> Okay, so this is a classic physics experiment. It's been talked about for like 300 years. So I, I of course, give it my own twist. But um, yes, we have heard about the dreaded killer monkey of Brazil and decided that we need, need to go there and, and kill it. And so we go to Brazil and we heard that there's these great guides that can get us and try and find the dreaded killer monkey of Brazil. <clears throat> Except being from Laredo, of course, we showed up late. And all the good guides were taken. And yeah, like that's not a problem here. Um, so all the good guides were taken. And so what we got was our junior scout. And he had never actually been guiding before, but he thought he could do it. And so we were desperate. And so we, we went with him. And after wandering through the jungle for a long, long time, Eventually, we spotted there in the tree the killer monkey of Brazil. Oh my God. He looks real cute until you see his killer fangs of death. Oh. <laughs> That's totally Still bloody weird. from his last victim. So that's the killer monkey of Brazil, and he was hiding up in a palm tree. Yeah. When we spotted him, I was located over here. That's what we're getting at, yes. I think you should fix your back. Okay. Sir, <laughs> you should fix your back, yeah. I'm sorry. Is that a hat? Yeah. I'm wearing a hat, okay? <laughs> and I brought my capital D with me. Okay, it's not a capital D. This is a, a bow. And I'm going to shoot the dreaded killer monkey of Brazil with a arrow. Arrow. Now, I line up my arrow so that it makes a perfectly straight horizontal line with my killer monkey. And I pull this thing back and I let it go and... Why am I gonna miss? Because you're not good at aiming. And you're not, you don't have enough. I'm not good at aiming because I pull this bow back, and as soon as I release the arrow, the arrow is a projectile. So it's going to travel in a 
parabolic, parabolic trajectory. So the arrow, of course, is going to go down in some parabolic trajectory. And then I'm going to make it spin out. What? Aren't arrows like not projectiles because they have the little triangles in the back? No. So the, the little triangles in the back just that, help to, to keep going in a straight line. That's called decoration. No, as in not rotating. Okay. The arrow will go better if it doesn't rotate. It'll travel more like a projectile. And then the monkey's going to be laughing. Okay. okay, so, yes, the arrow is in fact a projectile, and it will travel in a parabolic trajectory. Now, the monkey did not get his reputation by assuming that all the people hunting him are incompetent. So... He's been hunted many times before, and what he sees me with my bow over here, and he says, I'm going to outsmart this guy. I'm going to watch him carefully, and when I see him let go of the arrow, I'm going to let go of the tree. Oh, so he's, he's going to fall. So as soon as I let go of the arrow, he lets go of the tree and starts to fall. Do you only have one arrow? What's going to happen? I already shot. As soon as I let go of the arrow, he lets go of the tree. I can't readjust anything. Is he going to hit him or not? Yes. Do you? Depends on how far it is. On the speed. Does it depend on the speed? Yes. The speed. Yeah. Okay. Think about this for a second. How does he look like the tree? Where are you? He falls. Okay, okay, he falls. Okay. He's holding onto a branch right now. I can't see it. I didn't draw it in the picture. Okay, anyway. Here's the interesting thing. <clears throat> He's cl the arrow is clearly going to miss him, but if there was no gravity, would the arrow hit him? Yeah. Yeah. No, because he would let go of the tree. And he would have fallen. If there was no gravity, he would hit him because it was aimed, and if there was no gravity, then the projectile would travel in a straight line motion at a constant speed, and everything would be groovy. He would die right there, right? Yeah. Now, what is it that is pulling my arrow out of its straight line motion? Gravity. Again, the whole reason that we have this parabolic trajectory is the straight line motion wants to happen, but gravity keeps pulling it away. But what is pulling the monkey down? Gravity. 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 So, so if the monkey it. is getting pulled for the same time period by the same gravity, then what should happen? They should die. Now, it shouldn't even matter if I pull it way back and let it go really fast or if I let it go like a little wussy girl. It should work either way, because if I go really fast, what's going to happen is my tra my trajectory will be flatter, which just means the time interval will be smaller, but it's a smaller time interval for both the arrow and the monkey, and so he'll die up here. And if I throw it like a wuss, then it's going to go farther, and it's going to fall farther, but the monkey will fall farther in that longer time period too, just like if you throw something. If I throw something really fast, the time interval is small, so you don't see it drop very much. If you lob it real softly, the time interval is bigger, it falls bigger. But if they're both falling the same distance over the same time, then it shouldn't matter. The monkey dies here, or the monkey dies here, or the monkey dies down here. As long as I've got enough food to get it all the way to him before we hit the ground, he dies. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay, yes. most people have no trouble wrapping their heads around this concept. What gets weird for people is when we talk about our scout. So if you remember, we had our junior scout with us. And so he, he woke up and he's down here and he's ready to go with his little... In Brazil, they like to use these little blow guns with poison darts on them. So he's got his little blowgun with him, and he thinks, I'm going to back up this guy's shot, because that way if he misses it, it it's going to be all good, because I want him to go home with a trophy, then I get paid. So, But since he's no good, since he's a junior scout, he doesn't know any better, he does the same problem we did. He aims this thing exactly in a straight line at the monkey. What a smart guy. Now, is that going to do a good job? The monkey would not know if he shot. Okay, but... Okay, so 
Would this hit the monkey? No, because the little poison dart is going to be a projectile, which will travel in a straight Travel in a parabolic trajectory. I'm trying to get you to say your vocal booter words over and over and over so it gets stuck in your head. Okay, so it's going to travel in a parabolic trajectory. So again, this is going to go ah, like that. It's not going to travel in a straight line. He would miss the monkey. But if we have the same scenario, what if the monkey lets go right when he goes puff? Would they hit this time? No. And again, most people have no trouble with the arrow part because they say, hey, they're both falling at the same time. From the same distance, so everything is groovy. But again, what is it that's pulling this out of its straight line motion? Gravity. And what's pulling the monkey? Gravity. So this should work because the fact that gravity is pulling both of us down out of our motion, as long as I was lined up first, this should work. What is the monkey Sorry. No, but it takes the longer time you shoot it, the faster it takes the longer to fall apart. It takes longer for the gravity to put it in. But it doesn't yeah, have different weights, don't If the weight didn't matter when we were dropping books and papers, they were falling together, remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it does. Push. Okay, same scenario. If, if he shoots this really hard, then it's going to get there faster. And so the time interval for both of them will be less, and so it will not have dropped out of its straight line path as much. If he shoots them like a wuss, then it's going to take you longer to get over there, and they're both going to fall farther, and he'll kill them when he's lower. Now, most people do not have a trouble, like I said, understanding the first one, but they don't like this one. They don't think, I don't know, does this really work or not? So the only way to show this one to you is to actually shoot a monkey. No, we used to use real monkeys, but the janitor got upset. Um, it was messy.